Hi all, my name is Lucky Tyagi. I work with Samsung Semiconductor India R&D Center and I have eight years of experience in embedded systems development. I welcome you all to my presentation, If Groups Do Not Panic, Here in OSS North America 2022. I hope you all enjoy it. And on that note, let's begin. We'll start the discussion with a basic introduction to Linux kernel and the various subsystems used by it. Then we'll move on to talk about kernel panics and different causes of it. Then we'll discuss about the tools which are available to us to debug a kernel panic and make sense out of a kernel oops message. And then finally, we'll have a short summary of our whole discussion. To begin with, what is Linux kernel? As listed here, it is a free, open source and Unix-like operating systems kernel. It is the core interface between the processes running and the hardware underlying and it manages resources as efficiently as possible or we could say that is the main job of any kernel. The kernel is so named because like a seed inside a hard shell, it exists within the OS and controls all the major functions of the hardware, whether it's a phone, laptop, server or any other kind of computer. As we can see here, the kernel lies between the application layer and the resources layer. By resources, we mean the CPU, that is the processor, the memory, and the devices connected to it. On application layer, we have the user space applications or processes running, and the applications send a request to the kernel via system call or IOPTLs or any other interface available to them. The kernel tries to resolve those queries or requests as fast as possible, as efficiently as possible, and as securely as possible. Listed here are the five major subsystems of any Linux kernel. The first one is the process scheduler, which is responsible for fairly distributing the CPU time. What that means is any process which is running in user space gets a fair amount of processing power from the underlying CPU and it is the job of the process scheduler to make sure of it. Again, it depends upon the priority we have set for each process. Next is the memory management unit, which is, which is responsible for proper distribution of the memory resources available to the system. Then virtual file system, which is responsible for providing a unified image to access the stored data. What that means is irrespective of the underlying technology we are using for storing data, that is it could be an SSD, an SDD or a USB flash pen drive. This subsystem makes sure that the interface which is given to user remains the same. That is, we use the CP command to copy data or we use Vim or CAT to access the data. The networking next is the networking unit, which allows Linux system to connect to other systems over a network. And then we have finally the inter-process communication unit, which is which allows the processes to communicate with each other or with the kernel to coordinate their activities. For example, we have IOPTLs and system calls or pipeline also, if you wish to say so. Working with Linux kernel code brings with it its own unique sets of challenges. For example, we cannot bug the, uh, we cannot debug the Linux kernel code like we will de like we will debug a normal C application or, the, or a user space application. This is because Linux kernel is not a process, but it is a set of functionalities. Also, there are cases where we may have a working and perfectly stable Linux kernel, but because it allows us to load uh, modules during runtime we can introduce new bugs or new faults through loadable modules. Most of the time, Linux kernel is self-sufficient enough to handle these faults. And in such cases, it usually kills the process which happened to be using the faulty module at the time. Also, not all faults lead to kernel panic. Most of the time, the kernel kills the process which was executing and using the, uh, sorry, using the faulty module and rest of the system goes on. In such cases, we can try to reload the kernel module and try to reproduce the issue or try to debug it. However, there are some cases where the fault can be to hardware uh, unstable state. That means the hardware is in unstable state or unknown state. Also, it can lead to cor corrupt kernel memory at random places. In such cases, the system stays in an unreliable state and it is rather advisable to have a reboot in those cases. As listed here, Kernel panic is a safety measure taken by kernel upon detecting an internal fatal error. We can also uh, call kernel panic as a situation when the kernel can't load properly and therefore the system fails to boot. 
oops is a linux kernel problem which is bad enough to affect the system reliability and in those cases it is mostly advisable to reboot the system the various causes of an oops or a kernel panic can be a software bug in the os hardware failure malfunctioning ram incompatible device driver corrupt root file system or in case if our init process fails to execute or terminate this may lead to kernel panic the panic routine is responsible for handling kernel panic its job is to output an error message to the console dump an image of kernel memory to disk for debugging and after that either it will wait for a manual reboot or it will start an automatic reboot the oops message displays the information about processor status at the time of kernel panic and it includes information about the cpu's register status the ip which caused the fault and the process which was executing or which was using the faulty module at the time on which cpu number the kernel panic happened and a dump of stack trace of functions which ultimately led to the kernel panic this is a sam sample module which we will be using to trigger a kernel panic in this module we are registering two functions init and exit using module init and module exit macros inside foo oops init function we are printing oops init message and after that we are making a call to function two oops you will notice inside the oops function we are making an invalid reference sorry a reference to an invalid pointer now almost any address which is used by kernel or linux kernel is virtual address and it is mapped to a physical address via the structures of phys via the structures of page tables when an invalid pointer is dereferenced the paging mechanism fails to map the pointer to a valid physical address and kernel panic happens this is what we this is the concept which we will be using for our advantage to trigger a kernel panic using this module when we insert our module or faulty module into a working linux kernel during runtime as expected it reports kernel null pointer dereference or rather we should say unable to handle kernel null pointer dereference when we are confronted with a huge dump of an oops message the most important thing to notice is the instruction pointer as listed here it is pointing to do oops function and the instruction which which caused the kernel panic is an offset of is at an offset of 0x8 in the function do oops also you will notice we have the dump of all the cpu registers present here and also this kernel oops message is pointing to cpu 0 which will report on which cpu this kernel panic happened if you have multiple cores available which process caused this or which process was using this faulty module and as reported here it was ins mod and in the end you will notice that the process has been killed one more important thing here is it is not necessary that we use ins mod command we can use mod prob also which is another functionality to remove or insert modules during kernel runtime and you will notice that call trace has dumped the uh, the stack trace dump of all the function calls which ultimately led to the kernel panic and in the very end it had called foo oops in it and foo oops in it at this offset gave a function call to do oops and in do oops at this offset the instruction caused the kernel panic Now that we have successfully created a kernel panic and got an oops dump from uh, from the Linux kernel with all the necessary information we need to debug a kernel panic, we will we will discuss about the different tools which are available to us to go on about the debugging process. First, we have the printk function, which is a standard function for printing messages, and usually it is the most basic or primitive way of tracing and debugging. If we are going with printk, we will usually add different printk statements in different stages of our module, and then we will check before kernel panic till which point it was able to print. Then we can use address to line uh, tool, which translates addresses into file names and line numbers. OBJ dump tool, which displays information from the object file. The object file can be the .ko file in case of loadable module or .o file in case of an inbuilt module. And lastly, we have the GNU debugger. These are some of the tools which we will be discussing today here. In case we choose to choose to use address to line, the command is add address addr to line hyphen e oops.o. Now notice it can be oops.o or oops.ko, both depending upon if it is an inbuilt or a loadable module. And then we will mention the offset which we had obtained from our Linux kernel oops message. Uh, here 
do oops at an offset of 0x08 also here where the instruction pointer was pointing at do oops at an offset of 0x08 so this is the offset which we will need to pass to address to line command and once we do that it will tell us the location of the dot c file and the line number in the dot c file which caused the issue in case we choose to use obj dump first we will have to through the cat proc modules command find the virtual memory offset of the module and once we have done that we will use the command obj dump hyphen d s hyphen d is for disassemble s is for source source is oops dot ko in this case and then we will tell it to adjust the virtual memory address of our uh, kernel module through this value so what happens is once it does that whatever addresses it is showing in its dump here obj dump whatever addresses it is showing in its output here though those will be added with an offset of this value so as seen here once we execute this command it is showing it is or it is pointing to this instruction which caused the kernel panic in case we choose to use gdb make sure that you are using it with vm linux image that is because vm linux image contains the debug information and all the symbols we will need for debugging once we execute this command we will get a gdb prompt and from the gdb prompt we can just simply execute list star the function name and the offset now don't be alarmed we are using a different function name here because we had compiled a different kernel to use this and a different file with different functions name but the uh, uh, the structure of the dot c file was same so in do panic function at an offset of 8 it will dump the instruction or the code snippet which caused which caused this kernel panic as seen here the uh, the c file is located in lib test panic dot c file and at line number eight is the instruction which caused this kernel panic next we will be talking about the kxec and kdump utilities kxec is a tool which is used to boot boot into another kernel while we have an existing and running kernel kdump is a tool which is based on kxec and it is a crash dumping mechanism to enable these things, we have to enable the following configurations as listed here in our kernel and recompile it again. You will also notice along with the kxec and crash dump uh, configurations, we have enabled magic sysrq. This is because we will be triggering the kernel panic via the magic sysrq key. Magic sysrq is usually invoked with a combination of alt and a sysrq key on PC keyboard or with special keys on other platforms. It is also available on the serial console as well. We will be triggering uh, triggering the sysrq kernel panic via the serial console and along with the alt and a special key we have to press a special third key which will determine what kind of signal we are trying to send to kernel. For example if we press s it will force the kernel to sync all hard disk or all disk. If we press u it will force the kernel to unmount all the disk and remount them as read only. Similarly b will trigger a reboot, p will print the process CP process register state processor register states and m will uh, print the memory information on the target system or in this case the target and development system both are same we have to make sure that the uh, that all the packages installed are updated and upgraded to the latest versions along with them gcc make and bin utils have to be installed which mostly if it is a development system if your development and target system are same will already be installed Along with that, we will have to install the Linux headers available for the current version of Linux, which we are running, the KDM tools utility, crash utility, and the debug information for the current, current executing Linux version. Once we have done that, we have to enable KXEC to handle reboots. We have to enable KDM to run and load at system boot. And to configure the KDM, we have these two files available, which are located at etc default and etc default scrub.d directories. Once we have configured our kdump and kxec, we have to restart our system and then to verify that the kdump utility has started, we have to check the dmessage log, uh, logs with the grep of crash. Hyphen I means it can be either uppercase or lowercase. And to dry run, uh, to test the kdump utility via a dry run, we can execute this command that is sudo kdump config test and it will give us the status of the kdump service which is running in the background. Once we have configured our kernel with the configurations listed in the previous slide and we have rebooted into it using kxec utility, we will trigger a kernel panic using the sysrq. 
as shown here we are we are sending the signal c to proxy rq file and that will trigger a kernel panic after that the kernel loaded over exit that is the that is the kernel which we had compiled with those configurations enabled will save the state of the system and memory and cpu loaded modules and much more information into a debug file and after that it will reboot automatically into a functional state that is the kernel which we had booted into via kxx utility will reboot and come back to a functional state once it has come back to a functional state we can check the var crash directory as listed here for a dump of our kernel image with all the debug information we need into a file which is formatted with the date at which the file was created to read this file or to read the debug information present in, in in this file we will use the crash utility and the command is shoot on sudo crash dump and the file name and then we will give the user lib debug directory path that is because that is where the kernel debug information is stored at once we do that it will print the information which the crash or k dump utility has trapped when the kernel panic happened so the uh, information which we have available here is the what what kind of vm linux or where the location of vm linux is and from that what kind of dump file we have and what is the cpu number or cpu core available we have available uh, we have in our system then the date at which kernel uh, at which the panic happened and other information and also apart from that it will tell the source of the kernel panic and the process id of the process which caused this so in our in our case as you will notice here we had done we had given the command c via a pipeline to t and t wrote it to or t wrote this command into proxy rq trigger so here it is reporting that the process which caused this kernel panic was command was command t and it happened on cpu core number 2 and here also it is telling the uh task running status of the sysrq and if we give the command i mean once we have executed this crash utility we will get a prompt and in that prompt we can give the command bt to get a back trace of the function calls which happened before the kernel panic was triggered next we will talk about the tools kdb and kgdb which are used to debug the linux kernel kdb is an in kernel debugger and kgdb is kernel to debugger kdb was uh, merged in the mainline linux kernel in version 2.6.35 which was after kgdb which was added or merged into the mainline linux kernel in version 2.6.26 and kdb uses the same backend as kgdb also it is possible to use either of those debuggers and dynamically transition between them during the kernel runtime and uh, but this will happen only if we have uh, configured the kernel properly while before compilation now kdb is not a source level debugger that means it does not need the vm linux file or any other debug information it runs within our executing linux kernel and through that it provides us a simplistic shell style interface which we can use on a system console we can use it to inspect the memory the cpu registers the process list which were executing in our system and the dms logs also we can use it to set breakpoints to stop at a certain location it is mainly apt and mainly aimed at doing some analysis to aid in development or diagnosing kernel problems also uh, it does it has a limitation that we cannot step over instructions as we do using a normal debugger in our normal uh, while we are debugging our normal c applications or user space application kgdb on the other hand is a source level debugger for linux kernel it is used along with gdb the process of debugging linux kernel through kgdb is similar to how we would debug a normal c application on our development system it is possible to place breakpoints using kgdb in the kernel code and then if we do have a kind of functionality where we can step over instructions and also we need two machines to use kgdb the kgdb instance will run in our in our kernel on our target system and gdb which will run our, on our development system will connect to the kgdb instance on our linux kernel or on ta our target machine and the gdb uh, in gdb the developer specify the connection parameters and connects to kgdb now these connection parameters is what is more, uh, uh, how do i say this is these are the parameters which uh, determine what kind of connection we will have with the kgdb we can have it via tcp also we can have it via serial console also
the different configs which we have to enable to use kgdb or kdb are listed here now you will see if we are using kgdb we have to make sure that read only data is disabled that is because kgdb will uh, write into uh, how do i say it will need access to storage to dump the, uh, the debug information we will have to enable the frame pointer kgdb and kgdb serial console to be able to see the kgdb dumps on our serial uh, terminal you will also notice kdb enables all the configurations which are needed for kgdb and along with that it enables kdb and kdb keyboard also this allows uh, us to send the uh, send input to a kernel which has uh, which has faced a kernel panic through the keyboard which is connected to the usb port next we will talk about the kernel debugger boot arguments namely three main boot arguments kgdb oc kgdb wait and kgdb con kgdb oc as listed here is the primary mechanism to configure how to communicate from gdb to kgdb as well as the devices we want to connect sorry we want to use to interact with the kdb shell kgdb wait makes kgdb wait for a debugger connection during booting of a kernel what it means is that is that if we have passed kgdb boot argument or debugger boot argument then as soon as kernel debugger as, as soon as linux kernel starts booting it will halt and wait for a connection request from the gdp gdb from our development system kgdb con on the other hand allows us to see printk messages inside gdb while gdb is connected to the kernel what it means is usually the debug logs comes inside the kgdb terminal or with kgdb prompt if we have passed kgdb con boot argument then those uh, logs will be pushed over the gdb connection to the gdb prompt which is on our development <coughs> development system moving on kgdb oc can be configured as a built in or a loadable module we, but be, uh, be aware that kgdb wait boot argument can only be used if we have configured kgdb oc as a built in module that is because if it is a loadable module even passing kgdb wait will not trigger any halt in the linux kernel because kgdb oc is not present in it to enable kgdb oc or to pass this boot, boot argument if it is a if it is a built in uh, kernel module we can use the boot argument kgdb oc in this format and the most important parameters here are the serial device and the baud rate at which it will be uh, at which the gdb will communicate over that serial device uh, for example kgdb oc equal to tty s0 and baud rate we have specified as double one five two double zero which is a standard baud rate for any ui terminal or any serial terminal if in case we have compiled it as a loadable module then we can uh, pass the kgdb oc kernel argument during the mode prop phase itself or mode mode prop step itself wherein the format will be mod probe kgdb oc kgdb oc equal to tty device and the baud rate or we have, if we have already inserted it we can use the csfs entries to mention these parameters now do notice we are not mentioning any baud rate here and also here here the baud rate is a uh, how do i say optional feature which we have to mention that is because once the kernel is up and running the baud rate is already set up for that serial console and we don't have to explicitly mention it all we have to mention is which serial console to be used inside the kgdb oc kernel module parameter in if we are going to enable it we have to tell the name of the TTY, name of the serial device or if we have to disable it we just have to pass an empty string to it kgdb con the one which is used to uh, push the kgdb logs or kgdb print k messages to the gdb which is connected over in uh, with our development system on our development system with the target now this cannot be used by kdb because kdb does not have any connection with the gdp on our target system again there are two ways to activate it activate it one is through the kernel boot arguments and one is through the csfs, CSFS entries we do have to make sure that we are enabling it after we have enabled the kgdb oc sorry after first we have to configure the kgdb oc and after that we have to configure the kgdb con because kgdb oc connects with gdb and kgdb con after that pushes the print message to the gdb on our development system 
we cannot use kgdb oc and kgdb con on a tty that is an active system console for and the example given here is an is an example for an invalid configuration however it is possible to use these option use these option or use these together if we configure kgdb on a tty that is not a system console so in that case this boot these boot parameters will change to console tty s0 double one five two five two double zero kgdb oc equal to tty s1 and then kgdb con in that case we can use these two together using kdb first we uh, we have to boot the kernel with arguments as mentioned here uh, sorry this this should be tty s1 yeah tty s1 or we can con configure the kgdb oc in the csfs through the entry as listed here and then we have to trigger we have to uh, trigger a kernel panic using the csrq or any uh, fault module faulty module and then after that our kdb prompt comes up on its own after the kernel has dumped its panic message and from the kdb prompt we can uh, run the help command to get get the list of commands which are available inside the kdb prompt which will help us in debugging some of the sample commands are ls mod which will show the kernel modules which are loaded or the ps which will display all the processes uh, or, or, which will display the active processes on the current core ps a will show all the processes and summary will show the kernel info and the other memory usage information related to it bt will dump the backtrace of the current process and d message will uh, and, and d message will help us in viewing the kernel syslog buffer go will continue the system in case we have introduced any breakpoint in the kdb debugging steps to use kgdb again the process is somewhat similar we have to pass the kgdb oc uh, kernel debugger boot argument or we can configure it through the csfs again do make sure before you configure kgdb oc your kgdb con is enabled sorry before you configure kgdb con your kgdb oc is enabled or configured then we will trigger a kernel uh, panic through the csrq and then from g and then as soon as the kernel panic happens we get the oops dump after oops dumps we get the gdb console kgdb console on our target system from our development system we have to execute gdb with the vm linux image that is because vm linux uh, image has the has all the debug information which is needed and then we have to connect to the kdb kgdb on the target system that is done through the commands mentioned here set remote bot double one five two d uh, five two double zero and the target remote we will have to pass the serial device which we are going to use if we are connected to the target system via tcp and port number 2012 then we can use the command target remote the ip of our target in the local network and the port through which connection is to be made once connected we can debug the kernel we, we uh, the, similarly we will debug any normal c application or any application through a debugger and uh, to enable gdb to uh, to be verbose about its target communication we have to set the command set debug remote one this is because connecting from gdb to kgdb is uh, uh, is prone to failures and to see exactly at which stage or at which step it failed or what <clears throat> response did not get from the kgdb from our target system we can set the uh, set the gdb to be verbose about it and that then we can figure out which step failed or what parameter was not passed correctly it is also possible to switch between kgdb and kdb during runtime this is the interoperability functionality between those two to switch from kgdb to kdb we have to either pass the command dollar 3 hash 33 in the gdb prompt or we can give the command maintenance packet 3 these two are essentially the same if we are going to switch from and do make sure this is passed in the gdb terminal that is in the our development system we have gdb instance running with the vm linux image to switch from kgdb to k uh, from kdb to kgdb we have to issue the command kgdb from the kdb prompt in our target system and uh, yeah that is it and in the, this talk is actually in, intended for developers who have just begun their journey in the linux kernel development path a general methodology of debugging a kernel panic is discussed here after triggering a simple soft panic a standard approach is followed explaining the various debugging tools and their usage 
to root cause the issue. And this is a famous instance from an interview which was given by Tom Van Vleck, where he remarked to Dennis that easily half the code Tom was writing in Multics was error recovery code. In response to that, Dennis said, we left all that stuff out. If there's an error, we have this routine called panic. And when it is called, the machine crashes and you holler down the hall, hey, reboot it. This is again just to showcase the simplicity and the keep it simple philosophy of Linux development. Any questions? And please, thank you. Thank you all for listening.